A very good morning students. Uh, this is your English teacher Benu Sarawat and I welcome you all to RKP online classes. Well, today we are going to read a beautiful poem in the book English Vibes. So I request all of you to open your books at page number 113. Okay? Alright. And the name of the poem is It dropped so low in my regard. All right. It dropped so low in in my regard. And it has been written by Emily Dickinson. Okay. Emily Dickinson. Now, Emily Dickinson was an American poet. Okay. Well, you uh, may be thinking why ma'am is uh, calling her poet though she is a lady right but it's fine it's okay to call a female writer or female uh, poet as poet not always poetess all right so both are correct we can call her poet as well as poetess right so emily dickinson was american poet right who was born in 1830 and died in 1886. Well, she was a wonderful poet and uh, uh, she was quite popular in American literature. Well, she wrote uh, nearly 2000 poems, right? And the most beautiful uh, thing about her writing style is that there is a, a strange use of punctuation marks and you will find a, a, a beautiful rhythm in her poems, right? And uh, you know what, Peter? Most of uh, her work, it was published and it was, uh, you know, read and enjoyed by people after her death. Yes? So, that was Emily Dickinson and today we are going to read a poem written by her and that is, It Dropped So Low In My Regard. Alright, now let's start the poem now. I will read the poem first. Alright, it's a very small poem, right? It dropped so low in my regard. I heard it hit the ground and go to pieces on the stones at the bottom of my mind. Yet blamed the fate that flung it less than I denounced myself for entertaining plated wares upon my silver shelf. Alright, so this is the poem, right? So only eight lines, right? But it's a beautiful poem and there is a beautiful message uh, which is present in this poem, right? So, it dropped so low in my regard. Now, we do regard, in my regard, it means mind, okay? Regard, regard means mind, Alright, so it drops very, uh, so low. So the, the poet is telling her that, you know, something, something fell down, okay? And it dropped. What is that? We do not know yet, right? So she says it dropped so low in my mind, okay? In my mind. 
I heard it hit the ground. Now, when something falls, right? Like if it falls, it produces a sound, right? So the poet says, when it fell, I heard the sound, right? The, the sound which was produced by the falling of the object, I clearly heard it when it hit the ground, right? And go to pieces on the stones at the bottom of my mind. And when, when something falls, right? It, it breaks into pieces. It breaks into many pieces, right? And they all shatter, right? They all shatter on the floor, right? So the poet says, something fell in my mind and I heard the sound, right? And it all turned into pieces at the bottom of my mind, okay? At the bottom of my mind. Now, when it happened, when it happened, yet blame the fate that flung it, less than I denounced myself. Now, Vita, here we get to know what is that it. You see the, uh, the word it in the first line, the first word in the first line, it, it dropped. So here we get to know the thing which dropped, which fell in her mind, it denotes to her own expectations. And ego. Now what are expectations? See, uh, we have a lot of expectations from everybody around. And sometimes uh, from ourselves also. Right? Like suppose um, there is my friend. Right? And uh, today I forgot my lunch okay at home i did not bring it right so i i already expected my friend to share lunch with me all right so this was my expectation from my friend right now one more example i suppose there is a, a, i have to appear in an exam tomorrow right but I did not prepare for it I did not work hard for that right but my expectation is to get good marks right now when the result comes and I do not get good marks what will happen at that time my expectation will be broken right i will feel very low right i will be unhappy and in most of the cases beta what happens whenever we fail at something we always blame our fate our destiny that you know and we always blame others like this happened with me because of this thing. This happened with me because I'm unlucky. Does this, uh, does this happen? Yes. So actually it here in this poem denotes to our own expectations and ego. Right? And ego is, ego is what? When you just think about yourself, right? You are the only person who is right. There is nobody who can teach you, who can, you know, advise you, who can improve you, right? So, and if somebody does that, your ego hurts, right? So, it denotes to our own expectations. Whenever our expectations get broken, we feel disturbed. 
we feel upset we feel very low so this is exactly what the poet is talking about here right now you must have understood this thing right now yet blamed the fate that flung it less than i denounced myself but now she has understood now in these two lines she says yet blamed the fate that flung it flung means threw flung means threw now now she says this time when it happened with me again this time i did not blame my fate my luck for everything that went wrong with me i did not uh, blame my luck for that thing and whom whom does the uh, poet uh, criticize at this time i denounced myself denounced means strongly criticized okay like uh, if i denounce like suppose i see a boy who is teasing a dog who is you know throwing stones at the dog so i will uh, i will say you know this is a very wrong thing to do stop teasing the dog so what i am doing at that point of time i am denouncing that boy i am criticizing that boy strongly okay so denounced denounced means strongly criticized okay strongly criticized all right wait wait up here we we'll use z all right okay so this time when it happened with the poet she did not blamed her fate she did not blame her fate and this time she just you know blamed herself for everything right for entertaining plated wares upon my silver shelf now for entertaining now for entertaining here it doesn't mean amusement entertainment no it doesn't mean that here it means for entertaining means for welcoming or for listening to or for uh, uh, giving such thoughts place in her mind okay that is that uh, what uh, it means the word entertaining for entertaining plated wares now students plated wares here means wares it what wares is uh, the utensils okay utensils plated wares now plated word means it has been polished with maybe gold or silver right so actually it means something which is very cheap which is actually bad right but it looks expensive because of its uh, appearance because of its beautiful appearance right so that is what that is why she has used this phrase here plated wares so uh, it was her fault only that you know she uh, trusted such people right such people in her life who were not as good as they appeared to be all right and she had lot of expectations from them right so she says upon my silver shelf and now what is silver shelf her brain her mind and her heart so this time uh, the things which
which went wrong with her she blamed herself for all those things because she believed such people who did not uh, who were not worth of her trust right so at the end she has realized and she has understood that it is never good to keep lot of expectations from other and we should not have ego also right and this is how uh, and the most important thing we should never ever blame our fate and other people for all the um miss happenings which happen in our uh, our life right so this was the poem so i hope you have understood it beta now i would like to uh, tell about rhyme scheme here uh we already know how to um, find out the rhyme scheme okay we always focus focus on the last word of the line right and uh we always take the first uh line as a and the second line if it is a rhyming word with a it will also be a and if it doesn't rhyme with a then it will be b right so this is how we uh, find out the rhyme scheme now if here if you see beta it dropped so low in my regard i heard it hit the ground and go to pieces on the stones at bottom of my mind now if you see here beta there is no rhyme scheme here the words which are at the end of uh, uh, every line they do not rhyme right so we if somebody asks you what is the rhyme scheme of this poem you will say it doesn't have any rhyme scheme okay and a poem which doesn't have a rhyme scheme we say that this poem has been written in free words okay please do remember this thing free words free words if uh, if a uh, if a poem has been written in free verse that means it doesn't have a rhyme scheme all right i hope you'll remember that then beta uh here is a poetic device i would like to uh, talk about poetic devices they are uh, just like ornaments right like a uh, a person when uh, he or she wears the ornaments the person looks more attractive the same way poetic devices are used in writing in poems and in uh, proses in stories to make the language more interesting more beautiful okay uh, so here you see uh fate through it do you see here uh, second uh, stanza first line uh, fate that flung it through it now uh, if you see here fate fate cannot throw something okay fate fate is uh, uh, an abstract noun right only a living person right or an animal only these things can throw something right they cannot throw fate cannot throw anything right so it is personification okay what do we call it personification and you can uh, there is uh, an easy way to remember it person there is person word in this uh, uh, term personification so basically you can remember it when a non living thing is given characteristics 
of a living thing, a human being, then we call it personification, right? So here we see fate. The, uh, the poet said fate threw it. Though we know, I mean fate, fate cannot throw anything. So it has been given um, uh, human characteristics here. So it is personification, right? And we also see, uh, come here, yes, second line, you see heard and hit, heard and hit. Both the words, they have same sound, okay? The initial sound is same, that is called alliteration, okay? So alliteration is basically repetition of the same consonant sound uh, at the beginning of the words which are nearby, okay, which are close to each other. That is called alliteration. So here you see heard and hit, edge and edge. Then again, fate flung, fur sound, right? Fur sound is getting repeated, the, that, the sound is getting repeated, all right? So, Vita, this was all about the poem, it dropped so low in my regard. I hope you have understood the poem and you uh, enjoyed it. So, in case you have any doubt in your mind, please do not hesitate to ask me. Thank you so much.